welcome back again. Uh, so what we want to do now is we want to actually display some things to the screen. Uh, we're just going to hard code a couple values um, and just like just stick them into core data and then just display them on the screen. Um, and that'll make us feel all warm and cozy that we really do have the R part of the CRUD done. So if we're looking at these things, what we want to do is we're going to start off by making a prototype cell. So let's go ahead and go back into Xcode. Uh, I've got this Troy board open already, which worked out convenient. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to modify uh, this prototype cell. Right now, this prototype cell it has the identifier of cell, uh, and we're going to change that to be lists cell. Whenever I change a constant like that uh, in the view controller, I try to be kind of hardcore about it and go put it into code like right away, right? So if I wanted to go put that into code right away, uh, what I would do is I'd find the, the cell for a row at index path. That's where this is going to get used. And I changed it from just being cell uh, to being list plural cell. Now, last time what we did is we were really careful about saying, saying things like, you know, you have no list. Um, for the sake of time, we're not going to implement that. It, it makes your code a lot easier if you just show nothing when there's nothing. Um, and so we're going to go with that. For your shipping apps, you decide how you want to do it. If you just want to show nothing when there's nothing and that, that works out fine with you, go right ahead. Um, but if you want to show like the there's nothing here message, you can do that as well. Personally, the way, when I choose to do it is when I'm talking to a back end, I like to show something because I expect it to take a while for the back end to show up. And also it might not work. Um, but if I'm loading stuff just from core data, I'm happy to just show nothing when there is nothing. And, and that's going to make my life easier. All right, so we've got that identifier set. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to set this type of cell. So I'm going to change it. Right now it's a basic type. If you remember from the demo video, though, we show the name on the, of the list on the left, and then we show the number of tasks in it on the right. So we need to change it to a write detail. Cool. So that's actually it for the, uh, the storyboard. Perhaps I could have just done it all the stuff in the storyboard and then come back, uh, but I, I got, I've got my systems. All right, let's try to make something show up on the screen and let's just walk through what all has to happen. So I'll go ahead and go full screen here and move my head around as needed. Um, so if we look at the way this works, everything kind of starts with, well, I guess technically everything starts with number of sections, but this connection from the fetch results controller to the table view took care of that. After that was number of rows. Again, like an NS fetch results controller and a UI table view controller, they're made to work together, right? So whenever they work together, there's a lot of boilerplate code. Um, this is what I consider part of their boilerplate code. So the way they get the number of rows and sections, you know what? They take care of that. I don't even have to worry about it. Cell for row at index path. What they do is they dequeue a reusable one. And then what they chose to do here is they chose to call a function uh, called configure cell. And they do that because if you, if you look for it, uh, their sample code calls it from somewhere else. Um, and of course, there's the, the method definition. So they, they chose to break it out into a function. Whenever I do that, by the way, whenever I break something out into a function, I try to make it uh, start with an underscore to show that it's like my own interior function. Um, so I'm going to rename it to configure cell. The way I chose to do that, I did that kind of fast. Uh, that square is not working out. Uh, the way I did that was I hovered over it, and then there was a drop down for, for edit. Another way you could do it is you could just simply type the underscore here. And then what I like to do is I like to just do a build. Uh, so that was just command B. And then just look for any places that there were problems. Um, so obviously, if you uh, rename a function in one place, you have to do it in, in all the places. Cool. Let's go look at that function, right? So configure cell, I'm gonna hold down command and click on it. Uh, it'll take me right to it. So what it does, of course, is it gets an object from the fetch results controller, and then it sets its timestamp. Um, I don't really find um, the bottom line useful. Um, and then this line, we can make a lot better. So instead of just saying, hey, it's some NS managed object, we, that's why we made these subclasses over here, right? So we're gonna say that it is a list. 
Um, and so we'll just call it list for row, I think is what I called it in the notes. Now we need to import a couple things. First off, it's saying I don't know what you're talking about with this list. So we're going to have to come up here and import uh, list.h. And then sometimes I feel like it wants me to cast it, but I think this time it's, it's fine without a cast because we're just saving it straight into the variable. Once we've got our list for the row, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do stuff with it. So you can see it's got things like a title. So what do we want to do with the title? So what we want to do for the title is we want to say cell text label uh, text is equal to the list row. So we're just going to set on the cell uh, the text label to the list row and then the detail label text we're going to set that to the number of tasks that are in this list. Um, since that's going to be a number and what I really want is a string, I'm just going to use a string with format. Um, what I like to do is I just like to say percent %d of my list for row task, which you'll notice is a set, by the way, not, not an array, it's a set, uh, but it's still got a dot count. That returns the number of tasks in this list. Notice it returns it as an nsu integer. Uh, to be honest, whenever I'm percent Ding something, I, I don't like to mess with like all the different types of variables. If I know that it's going to be small, um, I just want to make it an int, right? So I, I know it's less than 65,000. I don't really care about the precision conversion. Sorry, it shows up ugly there. Um, I just cast it to an int, then I use percent D. Uh, so now if you run it, it is actually displaying whatever it's found in core data, um, and it is doing it all right. It's just that there's nothing in core data to display, right? So we're halfway there. Um, I want to see some stuff show up. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to implement uh, some hard-coded things uh, just so that we've got some data. Now, whenever you do stuff with core data, what you do is you create, you know, NS-managed objects. They're in that context. Um, and then at some point, you have to click Save on the context to actually save them. It turns out that that save method, just because you have to check for errors, is kind of ugly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type save colon and just kind of see, see where they've done it before. Um, and I'm going to copy that chunk, and I'm just going to bring it up into its own method, just, just for my own personal convenience. Uh, so I'm going to copy it here, so starting with the error and including the closing curly brace. And I'm going to pop it into uh, save context. There's a syntax error, uh, and that's because where I chose to copy it from, there was a local variable shadowing the, the class variable, uh, but I'm just going to use the class variable, so self.managedObjectContext. And then there's a big comment here uh, saying that you probably don't want to do this in a real app because abort just crashes, right? And you should probably try to do something else. So great, that's my save context. There's one more minor improvement I'm going to make, um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to check to make sure there are changes. So I'm going to say self managed object context has changes and and uh, then the rest of this. Now to be honest, this line it's kind of confusing uh, just because it's an if statement that really the if is just for the purposes of, of showing logs and crashing if there's a failure. Really the meat is right here, so it's it's like a side effect of the of the condition of the if statement that is really the heart of what's going on here. So just to kind of read it again. So this should return true if it works. If it returns false, then crash the app, right? So if it's if it's not true, then crash the app. But before we even get to that, uh, we've added this little efficiency thing, um, and this is to say check to make sure there are changes before you even call the save function. And that's just because save is, is expensive, um, and they encourage you to check to make sure there's something to save before you just call save. Optional efficiency thing. All right, oh, the other thing I should have done is I probably should have called that underscore save context uh, just to follow my own uh, naming conventions. So now we need to somewhere create managed objects and then call save. Um, just just to put it somewhere, I'm going to use view did appear. View did load would probably work, but it might be too early. I just don't even want to mess with it. Um, and what I'm going to say is I'm just going to add a couple lists. 
to create an object, so an NS managed object subclass, you do not use alloc init. Um, instead, you do it in honestly kind of a weird way. Um, there's this class called entity description, and on it, there's an insert method. So insert new object uh, for entity for name. I'm just going to hard code the name here because I'm going to delete this eventually, right? Um, in managed object context, uh, self dot managed object context. That creates an object, and, and that object can be used like any other object uh, because we created that class for it, right? And so let's just say I wanted to make this one uh, iOS developer. So I'm going to have a bunch of tasks that are in the category called iOS development. I'm going to make a few of them uh, just because it'll be more fun. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and change it to list two um, and list three. Um, and I'm going to call them different things, right? So I'm going to have a 483, uh, which is Android development, which is another course I strongly recommend. Uh, and 480, uh, which is a web app frameworks is what it's really called. Um, I'll go ahead and put in the right title there. These three courses kind of model each other, by the way. They all do like movie quotes things and then like some grade recorders or some weather picks and grade recorders. And I think it's fun. I think you should take them all. Um, I teach two of the three of them. Plug done, back on task. Created three lists. And then what we really need to do is we need to click save. Uh, just, just for fun, what happens if I don't save it? Uh, so if I run it, um, it shows up. Um, and actually, it, it looks like it works, even without saving it, which is kind of cool. Um, and now that could have happened for two reasons. Let's run it again, um, and I can see that there's only three. Um, and so what's happening here is it's actually displaying it, even though it's not saved. And I know it's not saved because if I stop it and I run it again and again and again, um, I've still only got three of them. Let's go ahead and save it now, um, and now run it. And the first time, it looks great. Um, but you'll notice that this task is not at all idempotent, right? Um, idempotent means there's no effect if you run it multiple times. Um, you can see actually if I run it again, uh, now I've got a total of six. If I run it again, I'm going to have nine, no shock. Um, and if I run it yet again, I'm going to have 12, no, no surprise there. So I do recommend uh, that you, you get it to where there's only three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, command shift H it um, and then delete it. And then what I'm going to do, oh yeah, I didn't like when I deleted or whenever I stopped the app, that mechanism, which is fine. Um, I'm going to run it again, get just three, so exactly three, and then I'm going to comment this out. Uh, so just, just comment it out. Um, so you've still got a reference for what you did um, in case you need it back for some reason later. Um, but now you can run it as many times as you want and nothing actually gets saved. Um, so we've got a little bit of data in here to work with. Um, and that way we can prove that R works, so the R in CRUD works, but we don't have to actually implement the C correctly yet, um, but we will. And notice you can click on these, it doesn't drill down anywhere, uh, but we're making good progress. Uh, let's go catch the slides up, make sure that everything went okay. So we we changed the, uh, the prototype identifier to say list cell. Uh, we renamed this configure cell just because I like to do things like that. Um, we uh, displayed the information into the cell. We made this little helper method to, to help us save the context with the efficiency boost uh, for saving changes check. And then we just kind of hard coded three items, stuffed them into core data. I like to do things like this because it proves you really understand how, how things work as well. Like when are there going to be three and when are there going to be six and things like that. Um, I do ask that you, you finish up uh, with only three on here. Uh, and then this chunk of code either commented out or deleted uh, as we move forward. So, all right, we'll see you next time, and we'll show you how to actually make a list and do it the right way. All right, see you then.